Whoa, you guys. It's your scully friend here, back with another episode of Reaching Out. And I'm going to feature some really good artists today, which you all personally can relate to. And I know you can relate to them because you've seen them before through their art. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? I mean, not that it matters, but nothing's really going to make sense from here soon. So, DeviantArt user LittleInvisible001 has been a Deviant artist for about five years. And let me tell you now, this was one of her first works, originally submitted in around late September to early October of 2013, and I will be personally honest with you, I think that this is a really, really good picture. I mean, clearly, the background is very somewhat flawlessly drawn. I mean, there are a couple of mistakes here and there, but they're not as visible to the naked eye as one might expect. I mean, yeah. This is some pretty good stuff we have here. Especially with the Powerpuff Girls inspired logo. I mean, not that it's inspired by the original Powerpuff Girls logo, but I mean, who cares, right? Also note, hair should flow with the wind's direction. Smiley face. Also notice the letter D. Hmm. Also, if you haven't noticed, her commentary is absolutely perfect, which says a lot. Also noteworthy is her really amazing photography skills, which obviously bears mentioning here, because Considering she took a camera shot of a lion and how well it turned out, I can easily say that she should probably do more of these. So, Little Invisible 001, if you're watching this, you're a really good photographer, and I encourage you to make more photographs pertaining to this nature. I mean, I mean, not that you're going to, of course, you're the one that makes the choices, but I just want to motivate you, you know, because this, this photography shot is obviously really good, and the lion seems really, really happy. I mean, no correlation to Leo, who's the mascot of MGM, but still. Anyhow, people, this is a clear-cut example of what a photograph should be, full of life, of energy, of happiness and joy. Sure, the quality isn't great in this particular photograph, but this is from March of 2014, and cameras weren't all that efficient back then. Even my first photographs were poorly executed because I started taking photographs in 2013, and apparently I wasn't very experienced at it. But I learned how to perfect that craft over time, just as I can clearly see here. And there's no doubt whatsoever in my mind that Little Invisible 001 is a very intriguing and very extraordinary, I should say, photographer. Another one best works, in my opinion, is page two of her comic, Undisguised. Now, let me point out right now that this comic page is done remarkably. It is phenomenally drawn, and it has a lot of capability about it. Also notice the comedy segments in here. You know? Thanks for joining me on my first mission, Nathan. Just, just keep walking. And don't thank me. Huh? That slender douche from Nick. Thank that slender douche for making me calm. Who calls slender douche? Ha! <laughs> you just like the others. What's that supposed to mean? Always so loyal to Master Slenderman, eh? Well, excuse me for not being a total dick like you! I mean, this is really 
good. The comedy parts in between are actually really good. I mean, I like this. I like this very much. This is some grade A quality stuff. I mean, seriously, this is great. I like how all this is drawn in a dark setting in a forest somewhere. It's great. Totally remarkable. And believe me, I'm not kidding when I say that. I actually <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> oh wow. This is interesting. This is very interesting. Clearly, she must have been inspired by the Harry Potter franchise created by J.K. Rowling. This is interesting stuff here, yeah. Also notice Hufflepuff, Gryffindor, I think, and Slytherin references. I mean, not that it matters, but still. <laughs> this, this, is, this is actually really neatly drawn. Also notice her improvement since one of her first drawings that I just reviewed earlier this episode from 2013. This is, this is actually quite an improvement. It's not noticeable to most people, but it's noticeable to me, so I see it for what it is. And it's a vast improvement over time. Oh, shit! So apparently, this person, Candy McPink, is from Ravenclaw. I thought it was Gryffindor at first, but boy was I wrong. Well, seeing as though I've come across this one before, I can easily say that this is one of my favorites from her gallery. Now, um, I need to address something here. I need to be completely transparent with you. I made a really, um, awkward comment regarding this picture, and, uh, my friend Little Invisible 001 called me out for it, and of course I apologized. And, you know, I, I repented to God for it too, because of course I had to. And we had a bit of a misunderstanding at first, but eventually it was resolved, and everything was fine from that point onward, and still is. But. I still must say, this is a fantastic picture. I mean, look at the pose here. That's just... This picture in itself is magical. This girl isn't the only person in this picture that's magical. This whole picture is, too, especially the background. The background of choice that she put in here is just perfect and very fitting. You know? So... Yeah. Also, Zatanna reference. It's also worth noting at this point in time that there is another artist on DeviantArt that I've come to really admire in terms of art style. That is, of course, I'm talking about Dominoke, otherwise known by his real name, Israel Peoples if I'm not mistaken. I think there is a biography on his comic that, yeah, there it is. But Isaiah Peoples, as he is known by his real identity, is a manga artist that has created this comic called Afro Thunder, which is a manga, essentially. And what we have here is a really nicely drawn manga in the style of, say, Dragon Ball Z meets Yu-Gi-Oh! meets Attack on Titan in a strange twist of events with an added side bonus of historical accuracy. And this is one of the best inspired mangas that I have read, honest to God. And would you know it, he copyrighted it. He was able to successfully register a copyright on it. So, that's actually really, really awesome. 
I can't even do that. With my old words. Just yawn. Anyway, let's get to the point. This is a really interesting comic that is not only noteworthy for its very detailed ink style, but also, in general, for its unique, meticulous technique. And this is something that I highly doubt anyone will dislike, because in reality, it is that good. There's not a single person that you won't know, hardly, when you ask them that will read something like this on DeviantArt and say that they don't like it. What I'm actually what I mean to say is hell, everybody's gonna like this. That's basically it. That's just summing it up to the bare bones. Everyone is going to like this for its sheer inspired style, for its sheer tenacity, its sheer thunder, so to speak, hence part of the manga's name, but basically that's pretty much it. Just as a side note, what you're about to see in his gallery probably and likely might not be suitable for people who are under the age of 18 or people in general who just aren't used to seeing weird stuff, should I say. Anyway, let's just move on already, okay? I ain't got time for this. Holy shite. Uh, well, to quote Steve Carell from The Office, No! No, please, God, no! No! That was a terrible impersonation. Anyway, here's one of the, uh, more heavier material that I just warned you about. And keep in mind, you're probably going to get really weirded out by this. Just take a look. Does that not look weird to you? Then again, apparently weird is the new normal now, so why should it come as any surprise? I mean, I mean, seriously though, man, seriously. Why should it be any surprise to anybody? Because weird is the new normal. It's okay to be weird. You just gotta be weird in private. When you need to be. Also, this is our light. If, if that's even worth mentioning. Also, Okay, that actually looks really, really good. I, I can't argue with that. That looks really nice. Uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just move on from that. Now that's actually really nicely drawn too. Yeah? Huh. I, <laughs> I told you there would be some cringe in this shit! Also, more cringe. Also, furry persona badge. And I'll admit too, I became a furry too. When I started my Ashtar Skeleton Heart Flame Hammer account on Fur Affinity. I mean, just just go check that out. As a matter of fact, don't, because I'm going to show it to you. In all seriousness, and without any regret whatsoever, I officially became a furry on March the 10th, 2018, when I decided to get an account on for Affinity. This is my spirit animal, Ashtar Flamehammer. He is a crossbreed between an Ethiopian wolf and a tiger, or as I like to call him, a wolver. 
or a tiger or whatever. I just call him a wolver for short because that's essentially what he is. He's an Ethiopian wolf that looks like a tiger. But just thought I'd, I just thought I'd point that out to you, just so you know. Look at this nicely drawn, inspired Sonic the Hedgehog work. I mean, just just look at that. Sonic with his pose, Knuckle with his pose. I think that's. Well, that's that's a character from Knuckles Chaotix, if I'm if I recall. I think his name is Mighty the Armadillo. Hell, I don't know. But still, this is a really really decent drawing. I like how this all came together too. I mean, just just look at that. All three of these poses are just they're gold, absolute gold. Thank you, Domino OK. Thanks a lot for that. I mean, really though. I appreciate that, good sir. And that's all I got. So until next time, I'll see you on social media and cyberspace. Goodbye.